Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, for another episode of Condo Insider. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the uh, fire safety ordinance. And I have, uh, you know, two uh, 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 fire chiefs with us uh, to talk about it. This is uh, the uh, ordinance 1814, uh, the fire safety ordinance. And uh, with me today, um, my guests are uh, fire, Assistant Fire Chief Socrates Patakos and uh, Battalion Chief Wayne Matsuda. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jane. Hi, thanks for joining, uh, joining me on Hi, this Jane. show. Hi, Jane. Hi, everybody. And you know, the, the reason for the show uh, is we, uh, Chief Wayne and I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I think we started talking as I was getting these phone calls about deadlines under the fire safety ordinance. And before we start on, 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 on our questions and, and whatnot, I'm, I'm just gonna give a, 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 a brief background for the people who don't know what the ordinance is all about. And please jump in and, and correct me if I leave out some uh, information. But 1814 was passed uh, in, uh, on May 3rd, 2018. And what it did is it basically said that all high rise buildings in Honolulu, in Oahu, uh, had to uh, install the fire sprinklers throughout unless the building was exempt or it got a passing score in a life safety evaluation. And the buildings are exempt if they're under 10 stories or have open exterior corridors and all buildings, even though exempt, have to pass a life safety evaluation. And the life safety evaluation is an inspection that's done by licensed professionals. And they basically uh, look at 17 items and they, 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 they score these 17 items. And, and the whole purpose of the life safety evaluation is to have someone have a, have, have a licensed professional, an engineer, an architect, go through the building and make sure that certain components of the building are in good condition. And if not, to flag them and to uh, let the buildings know that they need to do certain repairs. And, and so, you know, the whole thing, the, the reason why I called Chief Matsuda was, you know, uh, somebody called me and said, you know, is there a deadline when we have to get these life safety evaluations done? And, you know, when we passed the bill, I mean, three years sounds like a, a long time, but they brought to my attention, it, it, you know, if it's three years, the three years is up next year. We have less than 12 months, right, Chief? And, May, and May 3rd, so, yeah. 2021, yes. Right. And I think my first question to you is what if you don't finish your LSE? Is a fire department going to give extensions? And your answer was no. Can you explain that? Thanks. Thanks, Jane. And um, Chief Saki can jump in anytime you want to as well. Um, the life safety evaluation committing to that uh, basically gives the, the building owners, building tenants, management, a good idea of where they are as far as um, what um, compliance issues they need to address. So without getting a, a good idea of what you need to go and fix, it may be something as small as installing smoke alarms in the units or, or something as extensive as uh, upgrading your alarm system. Uh, it's, it's case by case, um, but the sooner you get this accomplished, um, the sooner you'll know what course you need to take, how you're gonna budget for the repairs or the com uh, compliance issues. So the, the deadline we, we feel um, strongly about keeping to. Um, so the buildings at that point will have more time to go ahead and plan to uh, accommodate these repairs for the compliance issues, yeah? Yeah, and, and in that same conversation, yes, you, gave me so, you gave me some good news, is that uh, of the 350 some odd buildings in Honolulu or, uh, or in Oahu, over, about half have already completed their LSEs. Right. Well, th thanks, Jane. And um, because we we missed making it, um, I'll admit that that's um, something that the city could have done a better job with. We could have made it mandatory for the design professionals to submit them to the HJ's uh, authorities, authority having jurisdiction, which is the HFD in this case. Then we'd have a better um, um, idea of how many have been uh, contracted for, uh, or, or completed, passed, failed, but we didn't. So. We're considering amend, an amendment with um, Council Member Fukunaga staff and, and, and the city as well to see if we can go ahead and amend 19.4, sorry, 18.14 or 19.4, it's, it's 
current incarnation and go ahead and make that mandatory for the design professionals uh, to send out, send the completed LSEs to the uh, HJ, which is us. But right now you have a pretty good idea that at least half of the buildings have completed. That would be um, yeah, about there, Jane, about there. Because the ones that are sending them to us are, are, are doing so because we've had um, existing relationships with um, engineering firms. And mm -hmm. we asked them as a favor, can you send us so we can report to the city how well we're doing with this ordinance. So um, a, a good guesstimation would be close to half. So we're on track. Yeah. And, you know, just just, you know, just to be sure, you know what, when we were after we, we talked, I went on your website, the fire department website and the list of buildings that have to comply with the ordinance are is there. Right. So if anybody's yeah. listening or watching this and they want to know if they, they have to to comply with this, they can go on your website. And even me, who's not real, com, you know, good at these in, you know, internet searches, I was able to get it in less than a minute. And I got the list and yes, it is, it's still, it's there with the list of all the buildings that have to comply with the statute. Um, so- um, And Jane, not only that, but um, Chief Masuda's staff had contacted every building if they had not gotten a hold of the fire department and sent a letter that they intended to comply. So they have talked to everybody at least once already. Okay, and, and so, so that part of the ordinance, has that been complied with? Has everybody sent in the notices that, of that they, were, they, they are willing to comply? Have you, or, or is that something that's still pending? I, I think uh, last time I checked our, our, our tracking um, records, Jane, is just about everybody's um, um, submitted that letter um, stating that they're in t they intend to comply with the ordinance, yeah. Okay. You know, one question I get from a whole lot of people, and I don't know if you guys can answer this, is there a list of buildings somewhere that other buildings can look at and find out who has, who has uh, done their LSE and gotten the passing score? And you may wonder why is because those buildings would then be contacting them and say, how'd you guys do that? Or what did you do? Or, you know, you know, just networking and because there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And uh, so they've asked me, well, is there a list of, you know, where we can find out if, if the names of the buildings who have passed their LSE, you know, with gotten a passing score. You want to get it to the chief or sh shall I? No, you go ahead. Thanks, Jane. There, there's um, if they if they come and ask us, we can refer them to um, property manager, building managers who have um, um, contracted and executed the LSEs, and to see what the and it, it's a case by case business uh, um, assessment because all these buildings are, bit, are are much different, Jane. They're tall and they're narrow, or they're not as tall and they're wider. Some are older than the other, so um, some it'd be hard to. to um, gauge one against the other because they're so individual, yeah, these buildings. So if they ask us, I'll go ahead and, and point them to a, a building that's accomplished theirs and go see how they got theirs done. Pass can, you, failure. can you give our listeners your phone number where they can contact you? Sure. 723-7151. Again? I'd rather get it by email, Jane, if they could. W. Masuda, M-A-S-U-D-A, at Honolulu.gov. Happy okay. to help. Okay, thank you, Chief. In fact, you know, every time I, I, I meet with groups and I talk, I tell them, Chief Masuda says I can give out his email address and phone number, and I do. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, the word gets out. Okay, uh, and I, let me ask you another question. Do buildings less than 10%, uh, 10, 10 stories, do they have to pass their LSE? I mean, they're exempt from putting in fire sprinklers, but do they still have to do a life safety evaluation? and get a passing score. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, existing high-rise residential buildings, by definition, and cited on the LSE itself, um, is any building that has um, occupiable floors 75 feet above the highest grade of, of fire department access. So that's the definition of a high-rise. And some buildings are right there in the gray area, Jane, eight, nine floors, and depends on, on again, um, the makeup of the building and, and, and the surrounding streets, maybe, and, and you know, nine stories you can be exempt, and ten stories you could still um, have to uh, accomplish the LSE. So, what you know, that list that you've pointed to, that's available for the public to to, to see, um, that lists all the buildings. That's kind of a moving target, Jane, because we st we're still getting 
um, reports from engineers documenting that this building or that building does not meet the high rise definition. Yeah, they're not at 75 feet. I've had one okay. uh, 72 feet some odd inches. And um, like I've mentioned before, 72 feet to 75, the risk is still there, but we've had to have a, a cutoff point. So we're, that's the definition we're sticking to. So 75 feet above the highest grade with occupiable floors, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Got to do the MSC, right. Yeah. Okay, right. you know, you, you've been talking to the um, the contractor. So what is it costing the buildings? I mean, do you have like a a per unit cost? I mean, because I keep getting questions. How much is it going to cost us to do an LSE? Can we, you give our listeners an idea of what it's going to cost them? Sure. Um, as always, Jane, we, you know, we, we're, we're, we're telling everybody to go ahead and get more than one proposal, one quote, and shop around to see um, you know, the best value for your, for your dollar. And you, you explained earlier, the dollars are, are hard to get at this point, um, in, even in spite of the pandemic, but it's been reported to us um, $35 to $50 per unit is probably um, a reasonable rate, yeah. Mm -hmm. And another question that keeps, I keep asking, if they, you wanna do an LSE, how do you find out what licensed professionals to contact? I mean, I said, you know, there's probably, you know, the building uh, management, uh, they, they have ads. I've seen the ads for, for, you know, licensed professionals doing the life safety valuations. But, you know, the question is, if, what, what if you don't want to use them? Is there like a list of licensed contractors that they can, con you know, contact? And I told them that they should go to the building expo that they have at the, you know, the Neo, the Neo Blaisdell Center because they have all those, I, I know when I walked through, I saw all these people, you know, who were uh, saying, you know, they had the little placards that said that they do the life safety evaluations. Um, thanks, Jane. They, uh, we can't, of course, as a, as a government agency, endorse one over the next. We've had a, a number of informational ses uh, sessions with design professionals to exchange ideas and basically to make sure or try to make sure that everybody's um, seeing things from the same set of eyes. Mm -hmm. So um, if they, they have my phone number now and my, my email address, I'll, I'll be glad to share that with anyone who asks. Okay. You know, the, the, the life safety evaluation, as, as I indicated before, there's 17 items that get, you know, that have to be inspected. Based on your conversation with the licensed professional, is there like, is there any of these 17 items that kind of stand out in your uh, mind as, you know, seeming to be, you know, the one that a lot of buildings are having issues with? I take this one, Chief. Hi, Jane. Um, really, there's uh, several things, but uh, first, there's not having a sprinkler system, a fire sprinkler system in your building, because that gets mm -hmm. you a lot of points. And that's, then it's not having an alarm system that, that works per the, the code. After that, it might be non-compliant doors that don't have closers, other fire code violations, and, uh, and sometimes vertical openings and, um, or various combinations of, of the above. That's, that's what we've been seeing so far. Okay, you know, let's talk about vertical openings because that seems to be, I mean, and I have gotten two uh, calls from two buildings with vertical openings. And one was a 13 story building. And I think I spoke to uh, Chief Masuda about this several weeks ago. And I guess the fix that, that came in was something in, in the nature, it came at the four to $500,000. And I told them, well, you know, you have to go out and, and talk to other contractors. But what the fix was that they had to put some kind of a flooring on each one of the 12 levels, including the ground floor. And to me, that seems like overkill, right? Because when you get, you know, in other words, if, if you have these vertical openings and it affects every floor, I mean, and you're just trying to stop the spread, isn't there a way that you can do something with maybe every other floor or every three floors instead of making, putting the barrier at every floor? You know, when it's when you're not talking about a 30 or 40 story building, you're talking about a 13 story building. But I told them that they, they needed to go out and, and, and try to talk to other contractors to come up, you know, with with uh, solutions. But I mean, is this something that, you know, the fire department would consider? 
Jane, I, I think you are correct to tell them to go seek other contractors that uh, or uh, some other licensed design professionals that might offer some uh, different methodologies, but uh, we, we'd be stepping out into the world of a licensed architect or engineer who can uh, assure that that would you know, meet the code. And I don't think that's our, our expertise. Um, really, the buildings should have had those vertical openings closed from the time they were uh, built. Um, uh, and but I'm told that, have to that, that some of the buildings are older and back then they didn't have these requirements. And that's what the right. problem seems to be. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, some things that they could do, if they chose to uh, put fire sprinklers, of, of course, then that would solve their their problem. And uh, like Chief Wayne was saying earlier, each building's got a unique set of circumstances and they'll have to find out how to uh, best address their safety as, as best as they can. Okay, well, you know, we, why don't we take a one minute break and when we come back, I, I, I wanna talk about deadlines because there are other deadlines other than this one year, right? For the, to complete your LSE. So when we come back, we're gonna be talking about other deadlines and how uh, associations can meet those challenges raised by those other deadlines. So let's take a one minute break. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guests and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. back and thank you for, for, for uh, staying with us. And I've got as my guest today, uh, uh, fire, uh, Assistant Fire Chief uh, Socrates Batakos and Battalion Chief Wayne Masuda. And the question now, Chief, we talked about the deadline for, for completing the LSEs, but there's another deadline. In fact, there's two deadlines after that, but the next deadline is, is, is the one I get questions about. There's another deadline after uh, May 3, 2021. It's the deadline where you have to comply with the LSE, right? When is that deadline? And that's um, May 3rd, 2024, which is the six years to get these um, um, repairs or compliance issues addressed. And I think what, you're, uh, head, what we're headed towards is whether or not um, that's a hard and fast deadline. Uh, again, we're pointing back to the initial deadline of getting the LSE accomplished. Jane, I, like to, uh, I liken that to going to, to the doctor to get your physical you're not going to really know what's wrong with you until you go see the doctor and get get uh, get a good assessment. And the sooner everybody gets their assessments done, that the first deadline, uh, 2021, then we'll know uh, what we need to address. And these deadlines, um, we, I can't speak for the city, Jane, but I, I'm okay. And I think Chief Sakal agree that on a case by case basis, if the building show good faith efforts towards um, meeting compliance. Um, then, and of course, we'll address these and, and probably a lot more time. Depends on what's, what's at stake. If it's a fire alarm system, very costly to upgrade that, yes. And, and we'll, of course, a lot more time to get that accomplished. But provided the buildings provide uh, good faith efforts, a quote, pull a permit, uh, something of that nature, yeah. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say, okay, you know, just, just to summarize this, you know, the, the deadline for the LSEs, the life safety evaluation is next year which is less than 12 months away. So the people who are listening, which, and, and you know, you, you just can't go out and, 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 and make a phone call and make an appointment. So, you know, you, you need to start addressing it now, start looking for contractors, talking to them, have them come out and, and meet with your board. And, and, you know, it takes some time for these people to do the, the inspection. 
And so you need to do this. And, and like Chief uh, Masuda says, the life safety evaluation tells you what you have to do. And if you get a passing score, that's wonderful. You don't have to do anything. But most buildings probably won't get a passing score. And maybe you might have to do some small things. Like, because I had one building call me and say that one thing, they didn't get a passing score because they didn't have smoke detectors in the bedrooms. Not all the units had smoke detectors in the bedroom, but they had a vertical opening situation and they had to upgrade their fire alarm system. Okay, so this is a so the the the, the smoke detectors in every unit that's an easy cheap fix. Okay, and so the association should they can do that in less than three years. The fire alarm system, I mean, they got an estimate of maybe eight hundred to nine hundred thousand, and most buildings don't have that in their reserves right now, right? And so and then there's a vertical opening, and and they need to go out and you know get a proposal. Uh, or you know, several proposals to see what that's going to cost. So here you have, Chief, a building that has to put in a fire alarm system and the vertical openings. The fire alarm system is going to cost them almost a million dollars. And they got three years to comply. And so they come to you and say, Chief, we need an extension. What do, what do they have to show uh, for purposes of good faith that would allow the fire department to give them an extension in that situation? You want this one, Chief? Well, I mean to take this one, Chief. I'll start. Jane, um, uh, usually when people seek an extension, they have at least gotten bids and or hired a contractor and started the permitting uh, process. So by this time, they should know what their problem is. They should have explored how much it costs. Um, they should start um, budgeting for it and they should uh, start seeking a contractor as well as starting part of the job and they should submit all this in writing. Uh, that would allow the fire department to examine on, on a case-by-case -case basis if it uh, mind you Chief Wayne and his staff will issue a fire code violation and that will still be happen. This company would look at. So I advise all the listeners out there, um, do your best to start the work that, uh, that you need to do. Okay. And you know, uh, Right now, we're going through this COVID emergency. And as I was talking to you before the show started, I mean, last year with my building, I mean, and we have an older building, so our repairs are, you know, a little bit expensive. And so we were going to start on a plan to, to raise our maintenance fees 9%, which we did for 2020. And we were going to do 9 and 10% on a going forward basis because we knew we'd have to do something for the fire safety. And now with COVID, and the shutdown and the economy not even opening up yet. I mean, I know with my building, we sat down with our reserve study ex specialist and told them we got to make an adjustment for 2021 because we don't know what the economic circumstances of the owners in our building, whether or not they can even afford, you know, to do it. We're going to have to go backwards and, and maybe do maybe five or six percent. We can't do the nine percent because I'm, you know, I, I'm kind, I'm concerned that. You know, our owners won't be able to do it. And this was unforeseen. When, when you and I were sitting in the task force and, come, you know, discussing the, the, the ordinance and, you know, and nobody thought that there'd be a pandemic, you know, that would shut down the state and, you know, put a whole lot of people out of work. And so, you know, that's a circumstance that is going to affect a whole, a whole lot of buildings, some worse than others. And, and so 2021 is going to be, you know, a, a big uncertainty as to whether or not these buildings are going to have the economic resources to even, you know, work toward compliance. And that's that, that you know, is the fire department going to take that into consideration when people ask for an extension if they do? So, uh, Jane, so um, the pandemic started a, a few months ago. And uh, I think the answer is that uh, the buildings should have started to do something. 
And even at that time, when we started the conversation, we knew it would be challenging for many of the AOAOs because they had aging buildings with alarm systems that were very old that weren't sprinklered and uh, had sometimes had other problems. And we see it as something that needs to be worked towards, uh, not ignore, not ignored, and try to make some some efforts to do something. And we're going to understand that there's uh, economic circumstances and we'll review each case on a case by case basis and to see if there's been some good effort made and what we can all do as a, uh, as the government to help. Okay. Well, you know, th that's good to know, but you know, chief, what happens to, what happens, you know, you and, and, and chief Masuda, you might retire next year. And then, and then, I mean, is there going to be some kind of institutional memory uh, as to, you know, what was said in the task force at the city council meetings? And even now with you and me and, the, and Chief Matsuda talking about, you know, good faith efforts by the association. And, you know, I mean, how, how, how are the buildings going to know that, uh, that, that uh, if they do these things that the, Fire, fire department might give them an extension. I'll get this one, Chief. Um, okay, part of our responsibilities, ahead. Jane, as we get closer to whenever we consider um, retirement, is to leave um, leave uh, the the position and and basically in my case, leave the position um, in in a good place. That means um, a, cont uh, a continuity plan uh, um, to sustain whatever efforts we've had so far and make sure the next person up can and can. Um, accomplish the same good work that we've been doing. So everybody in the fire department is responsible to know the job, um, I think, of, of the, the person above him in rank and also the one below. So I'm doing, I'm doing my best I can to make sure that the, the captains below me, when they do eventually take over my position, I understand what we're trying to accomplish as a city. First as a department, well, bureau, sorry, and it's a department and as a city. So we, all, we have support, supporting people who aware of what's going on currently and they had they've had their hands in this from the beginning as well and they know what we're trying to accomplish as a, as a bureau a department and as a city so i'm not afraid of that happening at all okay well you know we, we've reached the end of the um our uh time here thanks for joining me and i'm sure that this is not going to be the end of the conversation and we and and now that chief wayne's uh phone number and email address have been you know further uh, given to the public. Uh, hopefully, uh, people will now have a resource if they have questions about enforcement of this ordinance. So thank you guys for, for joining us, and thank you for, uh, for the listeners for joining the conversation and, uh, and uh, listening to Condo Insider. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.